Juno New Origins has an interesting system. It looks both like our own solar system in some ways, but also like the Kerbal system in others. What I find the most interesting is the fact that the whole star of this system, contrary to most space games that I have seen, is a blue star. And orbiting that star are 6 planets, sharing a total of 12 moons and a comet thrown in there for good measure. And if you already know this channel, the inevitable question becomes, is this system even possible? I will do some calculations in this video that will shed some light onto this. I will start with Juno itself. When I looked at the wiki page to get some numbers regarding this celestial body, I noticed that these pages are somewhat lackluster when compared to the wiki pages of KSP. I mean, look at this. This is all they list about Juno and compare that to everything about Kerbal in KSP. Luckily, these parameters allow us to calculate some of the other parameters, like the mass of the star and its luminosity. So let's start with calculating the mass of this star. We know its radius and its gravitational acceleration at the surface. You might already know that the gravitational interaction between two bodies can be described by this equation, but also like this at the surface. So at the surface, these must be equal. We can then rewrite to get this expression. G is a constant, so we can just plug that in with the rest and we find the mass of the star. This method can then be applied to all other bodies. But for today, I'm going to focus on just a few planets. Like, do their orbits make sense? In the case of Drew, the game's Earth equivalent, we know its orbital period, which is 1.03 years. Even though a Drew day is 14 hours, days in the game are expressed in 24 hour cycles. So, this is actually 1.03 Earth years. Which is different from KSP, where Kerbin's year is 426 days, with each of those days being just below 6 hours making a Kerbin year around 106 Earth days, or 0.29 Earth years. Okay, let's get back on track. Do these orbits make sense? They give us the apoapsis and periapsis of the orbits, which is tied to the semi-major axis like this. Combine that with the orbital period, and we get an average orbital velocity of a body when assuming a circular orbit. We can then check if this orbit makes sense gravitationally. The orbital velocity of an object due to gravity can be found when we equate the centripetal force with gravity. As gravity acts as that force, rearrange for V and we get what the orbital velocity should be according to gravity. If we apply this to Drew, we get a velocity very similar to the actual or average velocity. Now, I want to check something else as well. Blue stars like Juno are usually very hot. The wiki page states that Juno is 8600 Kelvin. Compare that to the Sun, which has an effective temperature of 5777. If you think for just a second, you will realize that Juno is way too small to be a bluish star. I have this little plot over here that shows a bunch of stars with their radii and their effective temperature. And as you can see, there's a clear relationship. Stars seem to follow this path over here. If we drop in Kerbal and Juno, you will see this. Now, in a previous video of mine, I showed that Kerbal is a bit off. But Juno is certainly way too off for it to be reasonable. But what if we accept this and assume this star is possible? Would it not also be way too hot for Drew? Well, this is where I bring you an oldie but a goodie on this channel. The Planetary Thermal Equilibrium Equation. I have used this equation so many times on this channel, but it is such a useful equation for extending all kinds of things. For example, this equation shows that lathe in case P should have a low surface temperature, if we assume Kerbal to be its only energy source. In reality, a lathe is much hotter than we would expect, and so we know that there's something else going on with that moon. Okay, going back to the equation. The surface temperature of a planet or a moon, assuming no atmosphere, is equal to this. And this is the star's effective temperature, its radius, and this is the distance between the planet and the star, and this is the planet's albedo, or reflectivity. In the case of Drew, we can assume the same albedo as Earth, as it has a very similar surface. This results in a thermal equilibrium temperature of 323 Kelvin, or about 50 degrees Celsius. Regular plant life would wilt. And the Mars equivalent, Silero, is also on the hotter side, compared to Mars, but still at freezing temperatures. So normally I tackle Kerbal Space Program things, but I'm thinking of branching out once in a while with videos that look at the game like Juno. I will still mostly stick to Kerbal unless this video blows up, which I kinda doubt. This was a quick investigation into the system and I hope you liked it. Bye bye.